Welcome back to ASEAN in Focus. As ASEAN integration years, the country's business sector has expressed excitement and fears at the same time about the coming ASEAN economic integration next year. Now, there are questions that needed to be answered, among which is if the Philippines today is in a better position to embrace this opportunity. How important is the ASEAN trade to the Philippines? Are we ready to compete in this new economic regional bloc? How prepared is the Philippines for this? And to talk about these issues, we are honored to have as a guest a lawyer specializing in international economic law and the World Trade Organization attorney, Jeremy I. Gatdula. Attorney Gatdula is also the secretary of the University of Asia and the Pacific School of Law and Governance, as well as its lecturer for international economic law, philosophy of law, and political thought. He is an opinions columnist for Business World and is a member of the Philippine Council on Foreign Relations. Attorney Gadula was also a special legal counsel on international economic law matters for the Philippine government. He previously headed the Philippine and Indonesia offices of Price Water House Coopers World Trade Management Services. Wow, welcome to the program, Attorney. <laughs> thank you very much for that nice introduction. I know. Uh, yes, thank you. Welcome. All right, attorney was doing like that already. <laughs> but anyway, sir, my first question is, can you give us a brief overview of the ASEAN integration? Oh, well, essentially, it's, it's um, from the wording itself, it's, it's an integration or, or a close relationship. Um, I think in simple terms, it's the free flow of goods, services, capital, mm -hmm. uh, investments. And so um, I think for, for, for the lay people out there watching, it's, it's, it's really for, for those who are members of ASEAN, to be able to go in and out as, as, as freely as they can and uh, to be able to exchange all those goods and services. Mm -hmm. uh, on paper, that's what it's supposed to be. Um, but the actual goal here is to make it as, as some sort of, of a, a manufacturing and, and services um, outlet within which ASEAN is supposed to act as, as one production base uh, um, and to be able to do external trade with other countries outside of the ASEAN itself. So, oh, okay. Um, I think the I, I think that's also one important thing that we have to um, emphasize. I, um, people, I think, are, are thinking of, of integration as, as being something wherein the members of ASEAN would be trading with each other. Mm -hmm. But that trade has been going on for, for yes, already true. too long. Mm -hmm. um, what actually the 2015 deadline is supposed to do is to make um, people or the countries within ASEAN act as if they're one team. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. exporting to all the other countries outside the ASEAN, the U.S., for example, oh, okay. or, or Europe. Mm -hmm. So um, essentially that's the plan for ASEAN mm -hmm. integration. Mm -hmm. So that's um, what we mean by saying uh, integration, or that's how integrated we are going to be uh, by next well, year? It, well, integration can, define, can be defined in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Europe has its own type of definition mm -hmm. and other FTAs. Um, as far as the AEC is concerned, mm -hmm. um, the one for 2015, um, that's how we understand it to be, or that's essentially the vision that was outlined for EEC. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to be like e some sort of like EU? Uh, no, no. Um, e EU is actually a different type of animal. It's, it's really um, what we call a customs union. Mm -hmm. um, they have a single um, trade policy, uh, meaning for all the members of the EU, mm -hmm. um, the policy will be uniform, going in and out uh, mm -hmm. as far as trade is, is concerned. For, for ASEAN, it, it's, it, each country is essentially free to define mm -hmm. its own trade policy uh, and its own um, structure vis-a-vis -vis countries outside of ASEAN. Mm -hmm. But it's, that, it's just that within the trade within it mm -hmm. is, is supposed to be free with the intention that um, how, the best way to say it is like um, if you're a businessman mm -hmm. and you have a plant in Quezon City, mm -hmm. you can now get your materials, for example, from Makati, Pasig, and what have you, and then you export to another country. Mm -hmm. um, the plan essentially the same is to make that into a regional, mm -hmm. to, to have that type of practice into a regional mm -hmm. scale. Wherein now, like for example, if you're manufacturing shoes, you'll probably get materials from Malaysia, mm -hmm. services from people from Indonesia, and mm -hmm. then hopefully be able to exp um, um, export out um, outside of ASEAN, for example, the U.S. as I was mm -hmm. saying earlier, or Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's so, it will be <coughs> uh, made in ASEAN, mm -hmm. is it like um, Well. Well, not necessarily, because mm -hmm. it's still going to be made from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, a Philippines that have made use of the materials and services and every benefit that ASEAN can offer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that essentially is, is the meaning. Well, at least as I understand mm -hmm. it to be. So. Mm -hmm. so. so what if, sir, for example, <coughs> this country is, for example, Thailand has a bigger car market share mm -hmm. and the Philippines doesn't. Won't we be like um, in the losing end? 
Well, what's going to happen is that we, we don't go into cars, mm -hmm. so we go into the other areas that we're going okay. to be strong at. Mm -hmm. um, for now, um, electronics is one of our top selling um, exports, mm -hmm. um, wood and other such products, and obviously people as far as services mm -hmm. are concerned. So uh, that's where we go. We, we have this theory called you know, comparative advantage mm -hmm. in, in international trade. Okay. So what you do is you don't go into the areas you know, you're weak at, you emphasize the areas that you're actually mm -hmm. strong in, and, mm -hmm. and hopefully, um, I, I, by theory, Malaysia will not turn out to be a competitor, but Malaysia will, in a sense, be, be some sort of trading partner because they'll be doing the things that they're good at, as we'll be doing the things that we'll be good at. Oh, so. okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, one more thing is the competition policy. I think we still mm -hmm. lack some, um, some aspect in terms of competition policy. How important really it is for us to have a competition policy? Um, there's a difference between a competition policy and a competition law, and mm -hmm. I think this is um, really much related to one of the questions you had earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, one of your earlier questions that you po posted is whether or not the Philippines is actually ready. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the question is not whether the Philippines is ready. It, it's ready. I mean, it's as ready as it going, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. The question is really, um, can we fully benefit from an ASEAN in mm -hmm. integration? Mm -hmm. And how is this related to the competition policy? Mm -hmm. Well, because a lot of the things that we have, if you look at our competitiveness index, um, logistics index, mm -hmm. telecommunications, um, and all the other... Um, indexes that you have out there you know, that measure Philippine competitiveness. A, a lot of these things really would boil down to how good can our products be sold outside mm -hmm. of the Philippines. Because mm -hmm. what ASEAN does is essentially open the market. Eh. Mm -hmm. um, parang, like you're saying again from Quezon City, and all of a sudden Makati says, so we will accept products from, mm -hmm. from Quezon City. Just because it says that Makati is open to you does not mean that the people in Makati will buy from you. It will still mean that your products have to be good. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and what the Philippines needs to do is essentially shore up a lot of its competitiveness mm -hmm. concerns. Yung, yung, yung the, its wage issues, its ability to um, factor in the rule of law, mm -hmm. and, um, and all those other things. Um, power, transportation, the traffic, and, and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing I'd like to emphasize too, uh, and, and, and this is something I'd mm -hmm. like the viewers also to realize, is that our biggest selling concern is that, well, it's not a selling concern, but our biggest advantage among other countries is essentially our services. Yes. So it's essentially our people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one demographic that I keep harping on is the fact that around 70% of our population right now is around 30, 35 years old below. Mm -hmm. So in terms of population, we're incredibly young, we're incredibly mm -hmm. um, energetic, but they need a lot of training, they need a lot mm -hmm. of education. And, um, but if the educational um, system that they have is not going to be that optimum, then we are wasting a lot of opportunities, particularly in taking advantage of the other aging countries that are around us, mm -hmm. who are essentially our competitors. And um, the fact that you have a high unemployment rate for people who are in their early um, years, like for mm -hmm. example, people who are fresh graduates, they're unemployed, or they're um, underemployed, um, it's a, it's a malaking sayang in, mm -hmm. in terms of their uh, development and also definitely for the productivity of the country. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. so when it comes to ASEAN trade, you think, you said uh, we are in, a, in an advantage because we have a younger population. Um, well, well, potentially. Potentially. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, where do we lag? I'm not trying to be negative, but where do we need to improve on? A, a lot of those areas, um, ease of doing business, mm -hmm. um, the power situation, transportation, um, and I think the overall attitude, the, the government has a lot of great plans, yung, yung export development mm -hmm. plan and what have you, the, the identification of the core industries. Mm -hmm. But essentially, the, 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 the business sector, the private sector has to really step up and get that ASEAN mindset. Because eh. as of now, I mean, ASEAN has been there for so long. It's mm -hmm. been there since, yung, at, at least the AFTA, the Free Trade Agreement, mm -hmm. has been there since 1992. But our ability to exploit or to take advantage of the benefits under the AFTA provisions has always hovered around 20%, mm -hmm. which means that um, all the benefits that are there, yung mga little uh, discounts that we could have taken mm -hmm. in, in terms of tariff reductions and the like, uh, not many of our companies have been doing that. I think the, the best way I could describe it is, and, and this is where the importance of your show is coming in, mm -hmm. if Filipinos, Filipinos, the private sector, could be encouraged to look at ASEAN mm -hmm. as essentially part of the Philippines, it's part of their, the province, mm -hmm. rather than thinking of it as a, as a foreign, strange land, mm -hmm. then, um, then perhaps, because the Europeans don't think of, like for example, if you're a U European, you're French, for you, going to England or going to London is nothing. Eh? Mm -mm. Yeah. And if we could get that mindset that it's essentially our neighborhood, mm -hmm. then um, 
hopefully we will be able to encourage a lot more businessmen to, to see more prospects, see more sources of raw materials and opportunities, and, and that will go a long way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So personally, how far, for you, sir, ha, how far are we into achieving that, those things that you have mentioned? Uh, it really depends on, on, on the level of the, the speed of education that our people mm -hmm. will have. Right now, there's always this little resistance on, on, um, on, on, on looking at the saying in that, in that fashion. I think right now, when you look at the headlines, um, and I, I believe you're, yours yeah. is the only show that actually does this, <laughs> but when you look at the headlines, what do we have? Um, corruption among certain politicians, who's going to be the next presidential and mm -hmm. what have you. But really, the, 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 the more important issue for the Filipino is, is how to be able to raise our standards of living mm -hmm. and what have you. And, and the saying is actually one of those big um, opportunities that I think we're letting us um, get away. Mm -hmm. the, the, the mentality that people right now have is that to see a saying as some sort of panacea, param, okay, since it's there, it's going to help us do well. But mm -hmm. it's not. It's, it's, it's essentially a tool and it depends on how well we use that tool for, for our country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, we'll see. Uh, it depends also on the next set of leadership that we will have in 2016. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, um. last question, sir. Um, I know they're telling me to uh, say, uh, <laughs> but, but anyways. <laughs> but um, last question, mm -hmm. how important is this ASEAN economic community to the common tao? It, it, it's huge eh? when you look. Because mm -hmm. the Philippine market is actually small. Eh? The, this is the irony of international mm -hmm. trade. Um, people leftist groups have been saying that we should be self-sufficient and mm -hmm. not let in international trade. But the fact of the matter is, at, even at 100 million, our, our consumer market is small. The irony there is that you have the bigger countries like China or U.S. They can shut the, themselves off and they will survive. Mm -hmm. We really need international trade. Mm -hmm. And the saying is incredibly important for us because combined, it's actually higher than Japan in mm -hmm. terms of, 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 of in and out trade, mm -hmm. um, bigger than the U.S., bigger than... than, than uh, uh, the EU even. The EU, yes. and, and so that's how important it is. How, how does it affect yung the ordinary person? Mm -hmm. Because the fact that if it weren't for ASEAN, number one, the yung, yung probability of getting raw materials for the companies that they might work in, mm -hmm. which provides them salaries, will probably be hampered. Their, their ability to get cheaper goods, whether it be basketball, cell phones, chicken that they eat at Jollibee and what have you. Mm -hmm. it, the, the chicken that eats the corn and all mm -hmm. of those other mm -hmm. things. It really affects a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, a lot of the in the daily life of, uh, of the ordinary Filipino. Mm -hmm. um, but th the the fact is is that kulang pe we could essentially exploit it better. And I keep using the word exploit, but it, uh, and I don't know if it's a proper word. But it's essentially something that we could do a lot more, mm -hmm. and it will go a long way in raising the standards of living of our countrymen. Mm -hmm. um, simply put, that's that's the bottom line for it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Thank okay. you very much. All right, thank you very much, Attorney Jeremy Gatdula. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing your views. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and we'll be back.